Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala nabihi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh So I normally do a little bit of an icebreaker but I need your, your participation as well So what I normally do is I, I will say a word and I want you to say the first thing that comes into your mind It has to be the very first image that comes into your mind So if I say the word, I'll start with the easy one If I say the word Mecca what comes to your mind? Kaaba, okay. If I say Medina, what comes to your mind? The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, okay. How about if I say family? Why? Why? Mashallah, mashallah. <laughs> Are you married? Mashallah. Uh huh? Mom and your dad, okay, very good. So the, the family household. Or well, the family are the building blocks of the households. And the households and homes, they are building blocks of the community. And the community are the building blocks of society and of the ummah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So I want to mention uh, very briefly a story about a Prophet who made a dua, but that dua was not answered for over a thousand years. And this was the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. In fact, every time we pray, we just prayed Maghrib very recently. We all have to send praise or remember the Prophet Ibrahim Now, why is it? You know, we all pray. We just prayed Maghrib. Why is it we say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad, kama salli ala Ibrahim? Why Ibrahim? Why not Prophet Musa alayhi salam, who, for example, is mentioned many more times in the Quran? And one of the reasons is because on the night journey where the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he went from Masjid Al-Aqsa up to the skies in the first sky he met the Prophet Adam in the second sky he met the Prophet Isa and Yahya in the third he met Yusuf in the fourth he met Idris and then Harun and then Musa but in the highest sky he met the Prophet Ibrahim now all of the Prophets prior to Ibrahim when they met the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam they said Assalamu Alaikum Wa Alaikum Salam but the Prophet Ibrahim was slightly different. He said, I send my salam to you and to your ummah. And so we are commanded to reply to the salam of Ibrahim salam, every single time that we pray. Every single time that we pray. And this is a legacy. This is the legacy of the Prophet Ibrahim salam. Imagine the Prophet Ibrahim salam, he's going to come the day of and that is his legacy. And we have to ask ourselves, what is our legacy? What will be our legacy? And Maqwas here, alhamdulillah, in many, many ways can be our legacy and should be our legacy. Now, it wouldn't be befitting to have this event without mentioning Uncle Lal Hussein, rahimahullah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enter him the Jannah and increase his level in Jannah. I mean, everyone say, Amin. So he is synonymous with Maqwas. And all of the things, you know, Umar mentioned about me, they're just words at the end of the day. But my first khutbah, my first talk that I did was in Maqas. And this is where Maqas is unique. That it gives the opportunities to build a legacy for yourself. For you and I. And coming back to the Prophet Ibrahim, he was so important, so important to us that Allah preserved his du'as in the Qur'an. But there's something unique about the Prophet Ibrahim's du'as. In the Quran, we know the du'a, Rabbi ja'alni muqim as Ya Allah, make me amongst the people of prayer. What comes next? Rabbi ja'alni muqim as wa min? Dhurriyati, not just me. Ibrahim didn't think about himself. He said, and my children and everybody else that comes afterwards. Rabbi ja'al hadha balad amina. Wa Allah, make this place safe. Not just for him. Wa razuk ahlahu min thamarat and those that are around him as well. And the dua that he made that was answered many, many years later. He said, Rabbana wa ba'thfihim rasula minhu. Oh Allah, send a prophet that will come later on. That will be from amongst the people. And this was the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But the dua of the Prophet Ibrahim was not answered straight away. In that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not come straight away. Hundreds and hundreds of years passed, but Allah sent the best of the best. The best of the best. And so in terms of patience, it's really important for us when we talk about our family, our parents, our children, sometimes we make du'as 
And they don't happen straight away. Whether it be for your children, whether it be an exam, a test, we don't see it straight away. But that aspect of impatience, just like Ibrahim salam had, that sometimes Allah holds it from you because he wants to give you the best. And this is about building our legacy. Now, how many people here are parents? If you're a parent, put your hand up. Okay, a lot of people here are parents. I'll, I'll mention another story because of time, actually about the Prophet Ibrahim as well. So one day he is walking with his child. Okay, and many of us, maybe we pick up your child from school, maybe you take them to the shop, maybe you're walking in the park with them. And he says to his son, Ismail, he said, Inni ara. He said, I have seen a dream. He said, I have seen a dream. Now, what's important here is that he's giving him one-to-one -one attention. He's giving him one-to-one -one attention. For us, it's very easy nowadays. Life is so fast-paced. You have so many things. We have our phones, we have you know, Instagram, our emails, WhatsApp, so many things that busy our mind. And children are like that as well. Children like technology as well. But the Prophet Ibrahim is giving us a lesson in parenting him. He doesn't just say to his son, I'm going to slaughter you. He builds in a conversation. He said, in the, he said I've seen a dream. And what he does here is something very unique. He makes the, his child the center of attention. He makes his child the center of attention. And the lesson for us is that when you make your child the center of attention, you will be the center of their hearts. You will be the center of their hearts. And even when we pray, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to pray five times a day. Did Allah say we need to pray for, you know, hundreds of minutes or, you know, hours on end? No. How long does it take to pray? Just a few minutes. And when we pray, it is a conversation between us and Allah. We're talking to Allah. What's the important part here? Allah wants us to focus on the quality of that prayer when you're talking to him. And it's the same for children. It's about that quality that you have when you're conversing with them. Even the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself, as Umar mentioned, uh, a story about Anas ibn Malik. There's a narration about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Anas had a, a brother called Umair. And imagine the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, the most busiest of people. You know, he's leading an entire ummah. He's the head of an entire ummah. And one day he came past Umair, this young boy, and he said to this young boy, Ya Umair, ma fa'al nughair. Oh Umair, you have a young pet, a young bird. How is your bird? Now just imagine this. Imagine for us, maybe we have many you know, friends or family members that have cats or different pets. When did we ever ask a young child, you know, how's your cat doing? And this is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He made the child the center of attention. And when we do that, then we will be the center of their hearts. So just to summarize the two points I wanted to mention today. Number one, it's important that we build a legacy for ourselves. Just like the Prophet Ibrahim. What will be our legacy when we come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And think about that when you think about Muqas. And the second thing is for our children. Give your child time and attention and you will be the center of their hearts. Jazakumul khair, subhanakallahumma shalawala ayin astaghfirullah.